5.6 half angle identities. These are half angle identities and they help us when we're trying to find the exact value of angles that we don't know on the unit circle but are half the value of angles that we do know. If you'll notice there's one half angle identity for cosine, one for sine, but there are three for tangent. This says find the exact value of each expression. The first example is asking us to find the tangent of 15 degrees. We don't know what the tangent of 15 degrees is, but we do know what the tangent of 30 degrees is. And we can write it as the tangent of 30 divided by 2, because that's equal to the tangent of 15 degrees. Now, writing it like this allows us to use the half angle identities. Well, the half angle identities for tangent, there are three different choices. So it doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to use tangent, I'm going to use the one um, where we have tangent of a over 2 is equal to the sine of a, and in this case, our a is 30 degrees. So the sine of 30 degrees divided by 1 plus the cosine of a, which again is 30 degrees. So we know those values. We know that sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Now we just need to simplify this. So I have 1 half over, in order to add these two terms together, I have to get a common denominator. So I'm going to change my 1 to 2 over 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2. So that gives me 1 half divided by 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2. Well, this is a fraction divided by a fraction. And in order to divide a fraction by a fraction, we have to multiply by its reciprocal. So this would be the same as 1 half times 2 over 2 plus the square root of 3. And when we multiply those, these 2's divide out, and I'm left with 1 over 2 plus the square root of 3. Well, I can't leave it like that because that gives me a radical in the denominator. So I have to rationalize, and I rationalize by multiplying by the conjugate of this binomial. So the conjugate would be 2 minus the square root of 3. And I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that conjugate. When I distribute the 1 in the numerator, that gives me 2 minus the square root of 3. And when I FOIL the denominator, um, if I multiply the 2 times 2, I get 4. And then, because I'm multiplying by the conjugate, my middle terms are going to cancel. 2 times negative square root of 3 is a negative 2 square root of 3. And then these two inner terms would give me a positive 2 square root of 3, so that would cancel. And then my last two terms would give me a negative square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. All right, so we know that the denominator 4 minus 3 is 1. So that's a 1 in the denominator. So my answer would just be 2 minus the square root of 3. Now we're going to find the sine of pi over 8. Well, just like we did in the previous example, in order to um, find the value of a tri uh, an angle that we don't know, we can use the half angle identities by doubling that angle. So if I double pi over 8, I get pi over 4. So this would be the same thing as the sine of pi over 4 divided by 2. Um, if I were to divide pi over 4 by 2, that would give me pi over 8. So these two are equivalent. Okay, so I don't have a choice when I'm trying to find, when I'm trying to use a half angle identity for sine. There's only one choice. And the half angle identity for sine is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of a, so the cosine of pi over 4, divided by 2. 
Okay, so the sine of pi over 8, which is what we're looking for, pi over 8 is in the first quadrant, and we know that all the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. So it's going to be the positive value. So it's a positive square root of 1 minus the cosine of pi over 4, which we know the cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And that's all over 2. Okay, so when I combine my terms in my numerator, again, I'm changing the 1 to 2 over 2 so that I can add them. And that gives me 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2. And that is over 2. So just like before, I'm dividing a fraction by a fraction, which I can't do. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. And when I multiply that together, I get 2 minus the square root of 2 over 4. All right, so this is actually, I can separate this um, into two separate radicals. And the square, uh, 4 is a perfect square. So this gives me 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2. So my denominator is not um, a radical, so I don't have to rationalize, and that would give me my answer. Now the cosine of 195 degrees, just like we've been doing in all of these, we're going to double that and write it as the cosine of 390 degrees. divided by 2. Okay, so all of the other um, values that we've been looking at, we knew what those values were. And so um, we don't automatically know what the cosine of 390 degrees is. However, the coterminal angle of 390 degrees is 30 degrees. So this would be equivalent to the cosine of 30 degrees. If I subtract 360 degrees, so if I just back around the circle um, 360 degrees, that would be 30 degrees. So these two values would be equivalent. Okay, so just like sine, cosine only has one option for the half angle identity, and it is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of A, so the cosine of 390 degrees, divided by 2. Okay, so the actual value that we're looking for is the cosine of 195 degrees. Well, 195 degrees would be in quadrant 3, and we know that tangent is the only Tangent and its reciprocal are the only trig functions that are positive in quadrant 3. So cosine of 195 degrees is going to be negative. All right, so this is the negative square root of 1 plus, and we need the value of the cosine of 390 degrees, which is the same as the value of the cosine of 30 degrees, which is square, um, the square root of 3 over 2. And that's over 2. When I add 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2, that gives me 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2. And that's over 2. And when I multiply by the reciprocal, The reciprocal of the denominator, which was 2, is 1 half, and that gives me a negative square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 over 4. And just like in the previous example, when I take the square root of 4, it becomes 2, so it comes out of the radical, 
and my answer is negative 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2. In example 2, it says, given that the cosine of s is 2 thirds with 3 pi over 2 less than s, which is less than 2 pi, find these different values. So we're looking for, um, in each of these, we're looking for s over 2. Well, this um, description tells us that s is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Well, we're not looking for s, we're looking for s over 2. So we need to find out where s over 2 is located. And if we divide the s by 2, we have to divide the other numbers by 2. So that's going to give us 3 pi over 4 is less than s over 2, which is less than pi. So that means that my values for s over 2 are going to be in the second quadrant because it's between 3 pi over 4 and pi. So we just need to keep that in mind whenever we're determining um, the sign on our answers. All right, so for a, we're finding the sign of s over 2. And again, sign only gives us one option for the half angle identities, which is... 1 minus the cosine of s, and they gave us the cosine of s, which is 2 thirds. So 1 minus 2 thirds over 2. And um, it was plus or minus this, but sine we know to be positive in the second quadrant, so it's the positive um, value separate this a little bit. Okay, so whenever I add my numerators together, I'm going to have to change that 1 to 3 over 3. And if I add, if I take 3 over 3 and subtract 2 over 3, I get 1 over 3. And that's divided by 2. Okay, so that's the square root of 1 third times the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. And so that gives me the square root of 1 over 6. Okay, so if I take the square root of each part, the square root of 1 is 1, and we have the square root of 6. So I need to rationalize this by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 6. So my answer is the square root of 6 over 6. Now let's find the cosine of s over 2. Again, cosine only has one option for the half angle identities. And we're in quadrant 2, and we know cosine is negative in quadrant 2. So the identity is plus or minus, but we're going to use the negative value because cosine is negative in quadrant 2. The square root of 1 plus the cosine of s, which we know is 2 thirds because they gave that to us, over 2. All right, so this time I'm going to add my 1 plus 2 thirds. So the 1 is 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3. So that would be 5 over 3. And that's over 2. Well, when I multiply by the reciprocal, 5 thirds times 1 half, I get the square root, oh, it's negative, forgot to put my negative signs, five over six, which would be the square root of five over the square root of 6, which needs to be rationalized. So when I multiply by the square root of 6, I get negative square root of 30 over 6. In this last example, we're finding the tangent of s over 2. Well, it's always best to use given information 
And since they gave us the value of cosine of s, I'm going to use the half angle identity that only requires cosine of s. So we are going to use um, tangent of a over 2 or s over 2 is equal to plus or minus. Okay, so we're in quadrant 2. And we know that tangent is negative in quadrant 2. So it's negative 1 minus the cosine of s. And we know the cosine of s is 2 thirds over the square root of 1 plus the cosine of s, which again is 2 thirds. All right, so if I get a common denominator and change my 1 to 3 over 3, when I add my numerators, 3 over 3 minus 2 over 3 is 1 over 3. And in my denominators, when I add 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3, I get 5 over 3. Well, since both my numerator and my denominator are under the radical, I can combine this as one radical and have one-third divided by five-thirds. So to solve this, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So I have one-third times three over five. My threes divide out, and that gives me negative square root of 1, which is 1, over the square root of 5. And when I rationalize that, I get a negative square root of 5 over 5.